Team CV Victor here with Celebrating Victories to give you guys another video and I hope you're doing well. Hope you guys are staying blessed. And in today's video, what I'm going to be talking about is how to start your ATM business from scratch. I'm talking about from the very, very beginning, how to do it from A to Z. That's what this video is going to be, be about. This is something that I wish I seen when I first started getting into the business, but it's super important. So I'm going to share this with, video with you guys. All right, before I begin, though, if you're new to the channel, check this video out along with some of my other content. And if you find that there's good, consistent quality content, be sure to become a subscriber. Like this video if it's good information. Be sure to share it with someone that it could be beneficial to as well. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to talk about is just do a little research. So if you're watching this video right now, you're already at this step. And there's a few reasons why you want to make sure you're doing this. Um, and I'm going to talk about each one. So. The first reason that you want to make sure you're doing some research is to find out if this is something that you really want to do. All right, you don't want to like get an idea of, oh, start an ATM business. Don't do any research. Start an LLC, start a, a S Corp, whatever, whatever you're starting out. And then you're like, yeah, this isn't for me once you get into it. And it's, that's kind of the, that's why I'm not a big advocate of college because I feel that's the route that a lot of people go into. They just pick a major in college and like, oh, well, I want to become a firefighter. Have no type of experience, spend $120,000 on education to become a firefighter. Once they finally get into it, they finally get into an internship program or starting to finally get the hands on um, information that they need, the experience that they need to really even determine if they actually want to do it and then they don't want to do it and now they're $120,000 in debt. I'm going to swing that back around because it's important to do your information to really find out before you invest a dollar into this. You want to make sure that it's something that you really, really, really want to do and you can see yourself doing. Okay. If it's not, then you're spending money on an ATM. You barely did any research and now you just drop $2,500 and that's $2,500 you're not going to get back. All right. So we want to prevent those things from happening. And the next thing that I'm going to talk about is going to lead me or what I just talked about is going to lead me into the next thing. And that's going to be discovering your why. All right, this is going to be very important because in order to have something good, in order to do something good, you have to have reason, right? There has to be some sort of passion, some sort of like real big reasoning in order for us to do something, especially to do something great, especially to do something that's big, right? So you got to discover your why. And what that looks like is just ask yourself, do I want to do this? Why do I want to do this and who am I doing this for? All right. And those questions can be dependent on, on, on each. They're dependent on each individual. They're going to be different. You could be doing it because you want to get out of your nine to five. You could be doing it because you want to spend more time with your children. You could be doing it because uh, maybe you want you have a family member that's sick and you need to spend some time at home with them and you can't do that, you know, working a nine to five. Right. So there's a lot of reasons and everybody's situation is different. So you have to sit down, discover your why. And if it's a meaningful reason, then you're good to go. If it's meaningful, something that you're gonna, you know 100% you have reason to do this and without a shadow of a doubt, you're gonna be successful. Because the moment you think, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna be successful, you're not gonna be successful. You have to tra train your mind. You have to turn your mind into something like, I know I'm gonna be successful. I know I can do this. I know I wanna do this, right? And when you have that mentality, when you have that shift in mentality, then you're going to be successful no matter what. doesn't mean it's the ATM business. I'm talking about anything that you set your mind to, anything that you want to do. It starts with the why. It starts with your mind, and, um, and you'll be good after that. The next thing I'm going to talk about is something that I did for each and every one of my businesses that I ever started, and I've really done it for each and every thing that I had genuine interest in, and that's going to be finding a mentor. And I'm not saying that just because I want you guys to jump on my course. I'm not saying anything like that. But the reason why it's important, because the difference between having a mentor and not having a mentor is going to be a minimized in mistakes, a minimalization in mistakes, if that's the right word. Um, and what I talk, what I mean by that is simply going to be the person that has a mentor has someone that can say, hey, man, you know, what do you think about this versus the person that doesn't? They're going to do things that they think is right. The one with a mentor and the one that has a support system that they can ask questions. They can ask the questions that they're not going to find simply online. They can ask the questions that are very um, specific to their situation. Right. They're going to do the right thing. They're going to be put into the right path because they have someone that can walk them through versus someone that doesn't have that, right? They can only get their questions asked or answered based on the masses, right? They can look at a collective um, answer versus a specific answer to their 
specific situation, right? So that's going to really be the difference. Not saying that you can't get started, you can't do things without a mentor, but having a mentor is just having someone that can motivate you. They can walk you step by step through your specific process, right? Your process is going to be different than someone else's because their situation is different, right? So that's someone that you want to have on your side. That's the reason why it's important to have a mentor. And guess what? I talk to all these people, all my mentors. And not only do we just talk about specifically to those type of businesses, we also talk about specific things in life and just check in on each other, see how things are going, you know, stuff like that. And that's the important thing. All right. Now we're going to get more into the meat and potatoes of it all. Now you're going to have to set up an entity. This is going to be really your first step. Minus the ones that I talked about, this is really going to be the first thing that you're going to do when starting your ATM business. One thing that's very important to understand is why are you getting an entity and which entity are you going to get? I can't answer too much the importance of which one you should get because I'm not an attorney. I'm not uh, your, any type of legal advisor for you. Um, I don't know your specific situation. Everybody's situation is different, but you can set up an LLC. It could be an S Corp. Every, everybody's situation is different. For me personally, I started off with an LLC. Um, I then, with my CPA, we then decided to go into an S Corp. So again, take this information with a grain of salt, but it's definitely important to get an, um, an entity set up. And the reason why is because this is going to separate you from your um, personal stuff, from your business stuff. And what I mean by that is, let's say you have a business, someone sues you. Now, they if you don't have an LLC, if you don't have, a, have an S Corp, you don't have an entity that could pre protect you. I want you to kind of think of it as a, an umbrella of protection, right? If it rains, it doesn't get you wet because you're under an umbrella. That's going to be your entity. That That's going to be your umbrella when things go bad, when people try to come at you and take money away from you. They're going to go after your business side of stuff and not going to take you away from your um, personal side of things. And that's going to be the importance of setting up an entity. Now, following the entity, what you're going to look into is setting up a business bank account. And this is going to be a challenge. A lot of people struggle with this. And the reason why they struggle with this is because a lot of banks, they don't want to simply say yes when they ask when some, when they're being asked to open up a bank account. There's steps that you want to do. There's things that you want to say. There's certain um, paperwork and documents that you want to bring. And there's also prerequisites before you this step. And one of that prerequisite is setting up your entity like I talked about before. Uh, but I think in 2019, there was actually um, there was actually a regulation that, that got approved that where banks cannot just simply say no to other people that are trying to open up specific bank accounts. Um, because that's really what it got to. It eventually got to a point where they were just like, oh, ATM, no. Oh, ATM, nah. Oh, ATM, no, we don't do that, right? So now with the new regulation, they are still turning down a lot of people, but the reason why they're turning down so many people is because these people are trying to get an ATM business bank account, but they're not prepared. They're not asking the right questions. They're not prepared to answer the questions that are being asked of them. They don't have the documentation that's needed. They just don't have the experience or knowledge. And I help with all that stuff, but that's gonna be a big step in your ATM business. The next thing we're gonna talk about is finding a location. This is everybody's favorite part. This is where you're gonna make money, okay? And simply finding a location, the first thing that I'm gonna tell you to do when you're looking for a location is go to your specific spots that you go to often. So if you're a female and you go get your nails done, every you know every two weeks or every week however often you do go you probably go to a specific spot and you probably go to that same spot very often so go to them because you already you're already a customer you already go there very often you see their face they see your face so when you go and you approach them and tell them about your atm business it's going to be more of a warm lead versus a completely cold lead because you already have established some sort of rapport whether that's because you're spending money there whether that's because you chop it up and talk to them um, when you to the owner when you do go in there right there's just a little bit more to it as far as um the warmness of that connection versus someone that doesn't know you at all and you're walking into some random business that you probably never walked into and you're gonna have a little bit of a harder time going that route so that's definitely one thing that i want to mention when you're talking about looking for a location but to be more specific on the the step right the reason why you have to have a location is because this is where you're going to put your atm all right this is where you're going to put your atm so that way you can generate money when people walk up to that atm they put their card in they accept the surcharge that surcharge is going into your bank account okay and that's the important thing of this step so finding locations we've talked about one way to do that is going to be what i just talked about by um going into places that you already been you could do a facebook marketplace offer up um you cold calling you could do, definitely do cold calling you could walk into locations that's another way. So there's a lot of different ways that you can find locations, asking family and friends, let them know, hey, I'm opening up an ATM business, or hey, I just opened up an ATM business. Do you mind supporting me? Do you know any places on top of your mind? 
um, that can use an ATM? Have you ever been to a location and were like, hey, I think an ATM would work, would work great here? Ask them those specific questions because then they could just do some thinking and then they can give you a, a spot maybe they went to this weekend. They were like, man, I wish an ATM was here or this could be a good spot for an ATM. Now, finding the location isn't going to be as easy as just telling someone, hey, you want to have an ATM in their business. It doesn't really work like that. So, so there are going to be objections that you're going to have to work through and um, find out how to handle in order to be successful. Because when you're going up and trying to present yourself to, to get an ATM into the business, it is kind of like sales, right? You're selling yourself, you're selling your service, even though they're not, they don't have to pay, right? Because we're not asking them to pay for anything, but we're still convincing. And that's what sales is. Life is sales, right? So you definitely want to be good at convincing people. You definitely want to um, be good at, at presenting yourself and, and things like that. Because like I said, in sales, we do that in life every single day. My, my kids, right? Your kids, if you have children, look at them. They are the best salespeople in the world. The reason why, because they're very persistent, right? Hey, daddy, can I have this? Or hey, daddy, can I have that? Or hey, what about this? And they're reasoning with us, right? And that's sales. We do that when we're trying to get a girlfriend. We do that when we're trying to get a boyfriend. We do that, not me specifically, I don't roll that way, but we do that uh, specific when we're trying to find, when we're mating, right? We have to sell them reasons to like us, right? I hope that makes sense. So it's very important. Don't look at sales as uh, some sort of sleazy tactic where you're a car salesman that's trying to sell you a, a car that doesn't work, right? We're not talking about that. All we're doing, we're just trying to present them with an opportunity, uh, an opportunity to better their life, to better their business. And at the same time, we're generating income from it. That's really what, what sales is, right? Just finding a way, a, a common ground in, in between two spots where both people are being um, benefited, right? That's what sales is. So objections are going to be things where people ask you specific questions or re give you reasoning on why they don't want to do something. One objection that's very, very common is, oh, I don't feel that the ATM business is safe. Oh, well, it is safe. And this, this is the reason why. Boom, 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 boom. And you spit that out. And now you're changing their mindset. And you're letting them know, hey, um, it is safe and this is why it's safe. And now they're like, oh, yeah, OK, that's not a big deal. Then I thought it was a big deal. That happens all the time. So as a subject subject matter expert in your field and as someone that's going to be installing ATMs in the businesses, um, it's very, very important that you understand your objections and you understand the most common ones. And you ultimately understand how to get over those humps, how to get over those hurdles when the business owners are throwing those hurdles at you. This is gonna be very important because in order to have an ATM business, you gotta get an ATM. So once you're ordering your ATM, that means you already found your location. I'm not a big fan of um, ordering an ATM before. Um, like me, I could do that. I'll get away with it because I'm established in this business. And you know, for someone that's brand new coming into it, um, I would tell people to just hold off on purchasing the ATM until you have your LLC or S Corp or your entity, whatever that's going to be, until you have an actual um, business bank account. And then as well as you have your um, contract in hand signed by an actual business owner to put a, um, a ATM in their location. The reason why you want to get those things is because if you're just starting out and this goes back to my my initial first step that I talked about doing research right if you're just starting out and you're like oh yeah i want to get into the atm business you order an atm it gets delivered to you now you now you you just realize you got to get a bank account you just realize you want to get an entity you're just realizing now that you still got to find a location right and now you start putting in putting in the work to do these and then you give up you're like man this ain't for me or you just realize it's just not for you it's not that you gave up you're just like hey this isn't anything that i want to do now you're stuck with an atm that's fully purchased and now you have to try to sell it or get rid of it one way or the other right and so you don't want to do that so i tell people get those three steps down first then you can actually go out and purchase your atm um, and then you have it all set in stone now you just got to deliver it and, and do that along with ordering your atm you're going to set up your processing all right and the processing is important because this is how everything is going to kind of go through the motion on what it's supposed to be like, right? So when someone puts their card in, like I talked about before, they accept the surcharge. Now the processing company is going to send that person's information to their own bank. And then when they send that, they send that information to their bank, the processing company is going to verify that they have enough cash inside their personal bank to do this transaction and also to pay you as the business owner and as the ATM owner, the surcharge. Once it, once that happens, 
it gets a ping back to the ATM and lets the ATM know, yes, you're clear to give this person $20. They do have the $20 in their account. They do have the fee that's being charged in their account as well. So you can send out the money. And then this, the ATM does its thing, it spits out the money. Now also the processing company, company is gonna be the ones in that process to um, send, you, send your money from their account to your account and that's what that looks like so setting that up is important as well the next thing i'm going to talk about is setting up your atm at home or at your personal office one big mistake that people make is they go and get it they order the atm and then they get it sent to the actual business owner's location and the reason why you don't want to do that is because when it gets delivered you want to be the one um, the first person to see it, you want to be the first person to touch it, you want to be the first person to evaluate it, to make sure you're not getting an ATM that's broken, damaged, um, it was it was damaged during shipping, um, it's missing parts, or whatever, because things can happen. Just like any business, there's things that can happen, and everybody in the world makes mistakes. Someone can make the mistake in the, in the pipeline from your ATM getting sent to you, to it being delivered, things can happen, okay? So you want to make sure you're there. You want to make sure that it's being sent to a personal location. That way you can take all the time to do what you need to do as far as inspecting it, as far as setting it up, setting up the receipt paper, setting up your new pin for your safe, setting up the internet modem, doing the settings inside the ATM itself, like all these things you're going to need to do. And you don't want to really do these things at the business owner, especially for someone that's just starting out, because if they do, you're going to run into some hiccups. They could be closing in an hour. They could be, you know, uh, rushing you to leave. There's a big mess of boxes and stuff all over the place. So you want to get into the comfort of your area and do this step and do this process because it's very, very important. You want to take your time. You don't want to be rushing during this time. Now that that's off the way, now you're going to be taking your ATM to wherever your location is to bring the ATM to get it installed all right so whether you're using a van you're using a truck you a lot of these ATMs are small enough to fit in your car you just have to finagle them a few different ways you can definitely do that a lot of these ATMs can be moved by themselves um, you're gonna need a dolly that's something that you're definitely gonna need in order to move the ATM when it gets delivered and when you're delivering it to the actual business location that's important to understand um, and then you're gonna be bringing it and you're gonna be installing it so a few things that from the top of my head that I'm gonna mention that you're gonna need is gonna be a hammer drill you're gonna need anchors you're going to need um, a socket wrench you're going to need possibly an extension cord you're going to need what else just those are some things that just kind of pop in my head right now that you're definitely definitely going to need them I mentioned the dolly uh, maybe a backpack to carry the stuff in all that stuff's going to be important so those are going to be things that you're going to de be needing now when you're actually delivering your ATM and you're bringing it to at to the actual business owners location a few things you want to remember and keep in the back of your mind is going to be the fact that you have to make sure that it's in a location that is not going to get um you're not going to get in trouble with and what i mean by that i'm not talking about the business location i'm talking about the location inside the business where you're specifically specifically placing your atm because if there's um things that can obstruct the atm and get in its way you can get potentially fined fifty five thousand dollars at this point um, because of that all right we don't want we don't want that to happen so what I mean is you want to make sure ensure that a wheelchair can sit in front of your ATM and be able to utilize it without having any problems things like that are going to be important if you just kind of keep that wheelchair um, I guess the wheelchair now anal not analogy because not an analogy but if you could kind of keep that wheelchair picture in your mind and what your what where the ATM could be placed at you should be okay. And I want to talk about when it comes to bringing the ATM and installing the ATM and bolting it down and all that is to make sure that your internet modem and all that is set up before you actually bolt the ATM down inside the business location. The reason why that's the case because you don't want to bolt the ATM down, start turning your ATM on, start having the Wi-Fi and all that try to kick up and then it doesn't kick up and it's already bolted down. Now you have to move the Wi-Fi, you have to move the modem, you have to move the ATM to a different location uh, because maybe the, the internet um, connection doesn't work properly in that specific area of the business, right? So those are things you have to think about. You don't want to run into that problem of having to move the ATM when you already had it set up and bolted down simply because the internet modem wasn't working properly in a specific corner or something like that. So that's something that just I want to mention just, just so that you guys can keep that in the back of your mind as well. Now you bolted the ATM. Your internet modem's good. You did all the things you need to do to get it set up. It's in a good location where it's not gonna get you fined or anything like that. Now it's time to make money. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna leave your ATM, you're gonna get into your car, you're gonna go drive off, you can go do something that you wanna do, whether that's time being spent with the family, that's going to a friend's house, going to watch a movie, going to the beach, 
uh, going to the club, whatever it is that you like to do and you want to do and you love to do, now you're making money while you're able to do it because the next person that walks up to your ATM accept that $3 surcharge, $350 surcharge that's on there, that's going straight to your pocket. Now you're profiting, profiting passive income through your ATM and that's the start of your business. Okay, lastly that I want to talk about, all right, doesn't end there. You still got to do your, um, if you're doing profit sharing, you still got to give the business owner their share at the end of the month. And how you can do that, you can simply write a check. Um, you can simply, you know, give them cash. You can do it many different ways. The most important thing to note is that you realize or that you um, report it, not report it, that you keep it a track record of what that looks like, how you paid them, the time you paid them the day you paid them, okay? These are all things that you wanna make sure you're doing because if someone's like, hey man, you didn't pay me for the month of September, or the month of January, or the month of February, you can say, you go back into your notes, boom, boom. Yeah, I did, it says here I gave you $150 and blah, blah, I gave it to you personally. Now, the absolute last thing that I wanna mention is ask for referrals, all right? Your ATM's probably been there for a few weeks, it's probably doing well, you're doing a good job refilling it as it needs to be refilled. Talk to the business owner and just say, hey, man, do you have any other locations um, that can you utilize an ATM? Or do you have any friends or family that have businesses that might be a good spot to put an ATM in? What do you think? And then they'll let you know what they think. And if they have a good spot, there you go. You can go evaluate it. You can go do what you need to do. And you're good on that aspect. I know this video is pretty long, but I hope it's very informational. I hope you learned a lot from it. If you're looking for some extra help, be sure to check the video description. And there's going to be some links in there where you can find a lot of good resources that can help you guys. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. Hit me up through email. And I will talk to you guys with another video. Stay up, stay blessed, and much love.